Hello everyone, welcome back to the tavern. This time we are going to be talking about a character build that I was thinking of while I was at work today. And after doing a little bit of research, it does work. And I thought it might be an interesting build for any of, anyone who's uh, starting a new campaign and wants to play a little bit off the beat character. Today we are building a strength based rogue character. Now, there are a couple good subclasses for the rogue. And some that are good on campaign or module specific but to get today we are we are going to be building it as the scout but this build work, would work just as well for things like the assassin or the uh, soul knife or the um, arcane trickster just have to adjust the ability scores a little bit so today uh, the reason I picked the uh, scout specifically is because of the extra skills that they get and because we're already a little bit of uh, across a few few ability scores a uh, little bit mad uh, multi ability dependent uh, that's the acronym for so if you ever see some, like a character that's a little bit too mad that's what they're saying uh, because of those extra expertises that you get out of the scout that's why we decided to go with that one today so uh, this is the point by that we went up went to 15 strength 14 dexterity 12 constitution 12 intelligence 11 wisdom and 8 charisma we are dumping that persuasion it's not going to be our forte but that's okay um, we went with the 14 dexterity because that's going to give us a plus 2 modifier. So uh, if we can get into medium armor, which we will be able to, uh, we will have the maximum armor that we'll be able to get. We're going to go with the uh, breastplate armor eventually. So race, let's jump over that real quick. Um, I'm building this as a mountain dwarf. The reason I'm going with the mountain dwarf is one, this dwarven resilience ability of resistance against poison and advantage of its on saves against poison is actually fantastic for rogues and traps and things like that the other reason that we're going with the mountain dwarf specifically is we're getting plus four um plus two to strength and plus two to con as our ability score improvements which is massive not a lot of races have plus four across total if we tally everything up so it's a huge benefit we get a tool proficiency we're going with mason's tools for that um so i've explained the reason in some of my other videos but mostly because you can say, hey, do I notice anything specifically about um, the stonework here that looks out of place? Are there hidden doors, compartments, things like that? And uh, you can uh, use Mason's tools to sort of notice some of those things. Stone cunning, intelligence history, origin of stonework, proficient, awesome, and double proficiency bonus. So very cool. And then uh, dwarven armor and training. And this is one of the aw awesome things about the mountain dwarf is we have proficiency with light and medium armor in addition to the battle axe, hand axe, light hammer, and war hammer. So we have some really good tools right out of the gate to help us with everything. Uh, so do we jump over to class? Let's throw on this rogue. Here we go. And now I'm going to build this class out to level 11. Um, the reason I pick 11 uh, may sound a little bit arbitrary, but that's because most of the pre-written modules run to level 11. And uh, the really sweet spot I found for playing Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition is from where the 5th fifth, uh, fifth level uh, tier 2 abilities come online, like extra attack, 3rd level spells, things like that. And level 11 where the tier 3 starts to happen. Um, so that, that tier 2 is a fantastic spot to play, but we're going to go through all the levels. Proficiencies. Uh, now we don't have the dexterity bonus. Our dex bonus is only going to be 2 and we're never going to touch it again. So we want to make sure that we get stealth, so that way we're never worried about it. We're going to be fine on stealth. It's actually going to be one of our expertises as well. Uh, along with thieves tools so now we're gonna need some other things in there uh, mostly finding traps noticing them things like that so we're, we're gonna go with uh, perception and investigation these are gonna be our default to finding traps detecting secret doors um, noticing things we do have dark vision as a dwarf which is also really helpful and then oh, I went intimidation we need investigation and then finally I'm gonna pick sleight of hand the reason I pick sleight of hand over the others here is it lets us be a little bit of the pickpockety type of rogue, but also if I want to say pull a weapon surreptitiously in the middle of a conversation and keep it hidden behind my back so I have it ready, I would uh, argue to the DM like maybe that's not stealth, that might be sleight of hand. Now if they say stealth, we'll go with stealth because we have the expertise, but it's a little bit disingenuous or you say can I use sleight of hand to try to um, 
uh, pull a weapon from my belt without anyone noticing or something like that. So I go with sleight of hand for that because you're not hiding yourself, you're just hiding an action that you're doing. Um, so we have sleight of hand as well. Uh, the other reason I like to pick sleight of hand is uh, sometimes dungeon masters will call for a sleight of hand check to um, deftly uh, pick a lock quickly if you're do it, trying to do it mid-combat, or maybe uh, switching items in your hands very quickly of, like, uh, I draw a weapon, I throw it, and then I'm going to pull a potion out of my pocket so I can drink that, or something like that. Um, that might be a sleight of hand check. Uh, some DMs might roll it. So I like sleight of hand. It's useful. It gives you some good uh, uh, roleplay pers pers um, opportunities. You might pick persuasion or deception. Now, we are dumping the, the charisma. Um, now, you don't have to dump the charisma. You could dump, dump wisdom instead if you so chose. But um, I don't like uh, dumping the wisdom because it's our perception skill there. Um, I'm, ju I'm just accepting that, like, we're not going to be the best at uh, being the party face, but that's okay. We're not meant to be the party face. Uh, expertise, stealth, and thieves tools. Now, basically, we never have to look back. We have that massive double bonus to stealth from our proficiency, so we're minimum plus four. With a 14 in dexterity at uh, level one, we have a plus six to our stealth and a plus six to dexterity thieves tools checks. So really fantastic. Um, now, you can also argue with thieves tools. Um, that maybe you, it can be strength check. Hey, there's a crowbar in the thieves tool set. Uh, can I use the crowbar and my strength with thieves tools and break the lock, break the uh, trap mechanism or the lock open? Uh, so that way uh, it's open. It's just not work functional anymore. I, I would totally allow that as a DM. Finally, the uh, we get thieves can't. Uh, so not finally, but uh, sneak attack. The really big thing that rogues get. First level, um, subtly strike a fo subtly strike and exploit foe's distraction. Once per turn, extra 1d6 uh, damage to one creature you hit with an attack. If you have an advantage on the attack roll, the attack must use a finesse or ranged weapon. You do not need advantage on the attack roll if another enemy of the target is within 5 feet of it. That enemy isn't incapacitated and you don't have disadvantage on the attack roll. So really cool. The extra damage uh, scales shown in the sneak attack column of the rogue table. All right, no problem. It's usually a uh, half rogue level rounded up, if I remember correctly. Like at rogue three, it's 2d6. Um, all right, thieves can't. Awesome. Let's go to level two. We don't. We get cunning action level two. Bonus action to uh, dash, disengage, or hide. So that's why we want that um, expertise in stealth. Because we're so reliant on stealth and hide checks, um, we need to be able to make sure that we can reliably do it um so even though we only have plus six that means we're gonna have uh like plus 16 on an average check uh which is gonna be usually pretty good for being able to hide we're not gonna be as good at it so we want to make sure that we are, are trying to get our sneak attacks in other ways but it's something to keep in mind uh let's go to rogue three and we have roguish archetype so we're gonna go with the scout and this comes into where i was talking about the extra skills we automatically gain per proficiency and expertise effectively in nature and survival. So now we have expertise in three skills, uh, stealth, nature, and survival. I'm using expertise as common parlance for double the proficiency bonus. Um, we also have it in thieves tools. Uh, we also have proficiency in three other skills from the class and um, two other tools from the ba background. And with background, we went with a uh, criminal spy, Herbalism kit and cobbler's tools. Um, now you could go with something like poisoner's tools or disguise kit. Um, all both would be fantastic choices. These are really personal preference. I usually recommend herbalism kit because it lets you craft healing potions over a long form campaign if you have downtime. Uh, we went with history and religion, two of the intelligence skills. Um, you could go with history and arcana here, and that might be a better pick actually. Oh, we'll leave it on arcana for now. The reason being is we want to be able to recognize uh, arcane runes and things like that that might be magical traps without having to have detect magic. Like, do we notice a rune that is very clearly arcana and not like hidden in the hieroglyphics or something like that? So that might be an arcana check. Um, so let's jump back. And uh, we have the criminal spy background. You could go with Outlander. You could go with lots of different things here. Um, so we could drop this down to Outlander. Save and uh, excellent memory for maps and geography would recall a general layout of terrain settlements and other features around you. In addition, you can find food and fresh water for five people. So let's go with that. Fits the uh, scout feel a little bit more of a nature out in the wild type of character. Maybe you made your living on uh, trapping and hunting and trapping when you were younger. All right. 
Ooh. There we Nope. There we go. Ah. That's not what I needed. There we go. Alright. That was so strange. Uh, dwarf. Mountain dwarf. Change race. Tool proficiency. Mason's tools. Description. Oh, I guess it reset my thing. Uh, so str rogue. There we go. History arcana, herbalism, and um, go with leather workers. There's leather workers on there. And then figure outlander. There we go. All right, class rogue three abilities. Point by max. Oops, max fourteen twelve. 12, 11, um, uh, oh, this needs to be 15, there we go. Um, and the reason we don't put the 11 in wisdom and not intelligence is we want, we already have proficiency and in intelligence saving throws. So if we want to fix the wisdom at some point with one of our ability score improvements, we'll give a plus one to wisdom by taking the resilient feat to gain proficiency and wisdom saving throws as well. So that's the reason that we don't put the 12 in the wisdom, we put it in intelligence. Wisdom saving throws are hugely important from early levels all the way through the end of the game. So we want to make sure that um, if we're going to fix them in a way, that might be the best way to fix it. Um, we're not worried about our dexterity saving throws as much. We have evasion as a rogue eventually. We also have proficiency in the saves, so we'll still be all right at them. Not as good as a main uh, dexterity rogue, but that's okay. Um, all right, let's jump over to the equipment um that shouldn't be there all right uh characters edit there we go equipment all right we have in our possession breastplate we threw two daggers on here four hand axes and two light hammers now our primary weapon is going to be these hand axes now let's take a look at these real quick they are uh, melee uh, attacks, um, reach five feet, but they have a range of 20 to 60. Damage, 1d6 plus three. That's because our strength modifier currently is three. Slashing damage, two, two pounds weight. They are light and thrown, so we can engage in two, he two weapon fighting while wielding hand axes. Now, some of you may immediately be screaming, but you can't use a hand axe with sneak attack. It's not a finesse weapon. And to that, I would point you to this tweet from Mike Merles, one of the creators for fifth edition, and uh, one of the people that we talked to about sage advice and has clarified lots of things. Uh, Mr. Merles, does the throne property satisfy the rogue sneak attack requirement of a ranged weapon? Thanks. Um, from uh, Buna Metten, Buna Metten, I guess, uh, or Drune Metten, I guess. Um, and uh, yes, at least that is the intent, both for melee and ranged sneak attacks. So that means if we have a weapon with the throne property, not only do we um, get our uh, sneak attack, uh, 3.5 is called heavy throne, but um, currently it's just called throne. So when we go to the hand axe here, it is thrown, but it is not finesse. So we do not use dexterity. We must use strength, uh, light and throne. So when we throw it at 20 feet, um, it qualifies for sneak attack because it is a ranged weapon. When we hit in melee with it, it is still considered a ranged weapon because it has a ranged property on it. Um, uh, now, we also picked up daggers. Some of you may be saying, but you're not dexterity, you're a strength-based rogue. Finesse. Let's scroll up to finesse right now. You ch use your choice of strength or dexterity modifier for the attack and damage rolls. You must use the same modifier when making an attack, not a ranged attack, not a melee attack. So that means we can throw daggers with strength and... Whether we use daggers in daggers, hand axes, or light hammers, um, if we go down to light hammers, light throne, same properties as the hand axe, but a D4 bludgeoning instead of a D6. The reason that we picked up the light hammers is because it's another weapon that we can use in two weapon fighting, and it gives us the third damage type. Now we have a slashing weapon in the hand axes, our default, a piercing weapon in the daggers, and a bludgeoning weapon in the hammers. So we have all three of the basic damage types covered, just in case type of thing. 
Uh, now you could totally eschew the hammers if you want and go with just the axes and say, I'm just an axe wielder and that's what it is. I threw them all on here, no big deal. Um, we're gonna get to the next real meat of this class and this is what I'm most excited about, level four. So we could take an ability score improvement and get our strength from the 17 that it is up to 18. Uh, we could go with a feat that buffs our strength, but what we're gonna do first is go with feat and sharpshooter. Now, let's read Sharpshooter real quick. As Attacking at long range doesn't impose disadvantage on ranged weapon attack rules. Fantastic, that means we can throw our hand axes 60 without penalty anymore. Uh, your ranged weapon attacks ignore half and three quarters cover. Even better, um, three quarters cover, 60 feet away, no problem, I got this, I know the arc. Uh, before you make an attack with a ranged weapon that you are proficient with, you can choose to take a minus five penalty to the attack roll. If the attack hits, you add plus 10 to the attack's damage. Now. As written from using the clarification from Mike Morrell's tweet, um, uh, the rate, the fact that a hand axe has the range on range requirement uh, on there, and it qualifies as a ranged weapon for sneak attack. When we read sharpshooter, if we attack in melee with our hand axe um, with a ranged weapon. Hand axe is a ranged weapon and it's a melee weapon. It doesn't say when you make a ranged attack roll with a, a weapon, um, it says a ranged weapon. It doesn't say anything about a ranged attack roll. Uh, you can choose to take a minus five penalty to the attack roll. If attack hits you, add plus 10 to your attack's damage. For, that means that in melee, we can two weapon fighting, use sneak attack on our hand axes to deal D6 plus strength modifier bludgeoning damage and sneak attack, or sorry, slashing damage and sneak attack, which is fantastic. Um, all right. And something that you cannot do with the other rogues D6 finesse weapon, the short sword. So let's kick this further along the road. Rogue five, we get our uncanny dodge, reaction, have and attacks damage. Fantastic, we'll be using that a lot, most likely. Level six, we get our second expertise. So we're gonna kick our investigation and perception up. We're not gonna pick history because we do have the bonus history when relating to stonework. And we're not gonna pick arcana, it doesn't come up as much. These are very important skills for being able to find traps and things like that. So we're gonna get those there. Let's kick up to rogue seven. That's gonna give us our evasion. So that's gonna be um, uh, no damage on success, successful dexterity saves, and half damage on failures. So that's gonna be huge for us. And we're doing all right on hit points too, uh, because we do have the 14 con from the plus two from the mountain dwarf. We have 52 hit points at level seven. That's not bad. All right, level eight, second ability score improvement. And this is gonna be the big one because we're gonna try to uh, feet. And we need, where are the feats? Here we go. Uh, I believe it's called uh, squat nimbleness. Um, yeah, it's dwarf or small race. Um, and squat nimbleness, here we go. And we're gonna go with, uh, we already have athletics as our strength base. So we might wanna pick that up. We might not, it's actually a personal preference um, because we have advantage on checks. I'm gonna pick athletics specifically because it gives us more grappling opportunities. Um, and we're gonna increase our strength score. Uh, so our speed goes up to 30, which is awesome, especially because we have uh, bonus action dashes. Our strength score goes up to 18, so that becomes a plus four modifier. You have an advantage, uh, proficiency, and athletics. Um, and we have advantage on athletics checks to escape from being grappled. The reason I picked athletics as the proficiency, though, is if we want to initiate a grapple, you do not have a choice. You must use athletics, so it's, I'd rather just have the proficiency in that. On top of our strength score, we're now suddenly going to be able to do pretty good grappling as far as everything else goes. And keep in mind, when you make an attack, uh, you take the attack action and you replace one of your attacks with the grapple. If you successfully grapple, you can then offhand attack still because you had to take the attack action to grapple someone. So we have a lot of cool flexibility when we get into melee. Uh, we also have the, survive, uh, the skirmisher, um, uh, third level that we've been playing around with since then. Uh, you can move up to half your speed as a reaction when an enemy ends its turn within five feet of you. Movement doesn't provoke opportunity attacks. So now instead of moving 10 feet, because that would be half of 25 feet, uh, all of D&D 5th edition rounds down, uh, now we get to move 15 feet with the skirmisher ability. So pretty cool. Uh, let's go up to Rogue 9. Uh, 
superior mobility, walking speed increases by 10 feet. If you have a climbing or swimming speed, it applies to that as well. So we immediately go from 30 to 40 feet. Now that skirmisher ability let us, lets us move 20 feet, which is amazing. We are quick on our feet at this point. Rogue 10, we get another ability score improvement, and this is our freebie. And this is the one that's sort of up in the air. I would play this campaign specific. I think my default pick here is gonna be to max out our strength score and getting getting that up to a 20. Uh, strength and strength. The reason being, we're gonna need that to be able to still hang with the bad boys. The other reason is using this sharpshooter ability, we're gonna continuously be reducing our attack rolls with sharpshooter. So we wanna make sure that we're incre uh, increasing that enough to try to offset it. All right, now we're gonna to go to Rogue 11, and this is where we're gonna cap out the build. We cap out at 80 hit points, pretty good for uh, 11th level character as a Rogue. We have Uncanny Dodge and Evasion. We're get, we have decent armor class with at 14 plus two for our dexterity, so 16 AC is not bad without magic items. And this is where we cap out to Reliable Talent. You refine your chosen skills whenever you're making an ability check that lets you add your proficiency bonus. You can treat a d20 roll of 9 or lower as 10. This is the other reason that we picked athletics for our squat and humbleness feat. Because now the minimum grapple check that we have with our um, proficiency at... Let's open up the strength rogue. Proficiency has is now at 4. So we have plus 4 proficiency in athletics. We have strength is plus five, so nine. So our, our minimum grapple check, if we choose to grapple in melee, uh, is gonna be a 19, which is pretty solid. Our attack rolls are, are all at plus nine, and you see the dagger has automatically defaulted to strength. One of the nice things about D&D &D Beyond, it knows that you can use strength or dex with this, so it will use the better of your two ability scores. Our AC is 16, pretty solid. We have our uncanny dodge to reduce damage. We have advantage against poison, we are a pretty solid character. We also have a passive wisdom, a passive perception of 18, and then passive investigation of 19. And that'll fix if we kick that wisdom up to a 12 somehow. So let, uh, I've built this entire thing without magic items. So let's go through a couple, ba probably the best items that I think you could possibly want for this. And I believe bracers of archery would work with this build. Um, add items, bracers. Braces of archery. Uh, no, made with such weapons. So only a uh, longbow and short bow. Don't does not work. Uh, braces of defense. We are wearing armor, so we don't want them. So uh, good good weapons that you could use with this would be anything that lets you your weapons return automatically. Any enchantment on hand axes is going to be fantastic. Even a plus one, it's going to be huge. Um, if you can get like a plus two hand axe. Um, uh, that's going to be your go-to weapon every single time. Uh, I would recommend talking to your DM about uh, if there are enchanters that you encounter throughout your adventures. One of the best things that you can uh, have enchanted right away is like a bandolier that you can have uh, four hand axes attached to. And whenever you throw a hand axe, it uh, bamps back to your bandolier. Or maybe even two hand axes attached to. So that way you can safely throw them and they... Uh, uh, like Thor Mjolnir back to your hand or back to your belt at the very least. Um, and uh, if you can get something like that, it's going to solve so many problems for you. Of, oh, I'm going to go pick up my weapon and then attack. That's what initially why I pick up four, four hand axes as the starting equipment is because you want to be able to throw a couple while you're closing a melee and still be able to pull two from your belt to keep attacking as you go. Um, let's see, other fantastic ooh, uh, equipment. Add items. Other fantastic magic items. Uh, one of the ones that I would recommend if you can uh, get a hold of it is oh, luck. Stone of good luck, also known as the luck stone. Uh, plus one ability to ability checks and saving throws. This is going to be fantastic. It's going to help buff our saving throw throws, especially that dexterity one, which we're not the best at. We just have the proficiency in the plus two. So at 11th level, we only have plus six to it. Not a lot. We'd prefer more if possible. So that's gonna make it a plus seven, which is great. This is actually gonna do better for us than uh, something like a Cloak of Protection or a Ring of Protection. I would rather have the Luckstone because there's so many more times that ability check matters than your AC matters. And we have ways to mitigate the AC. We are we do have a lot of health um, 
and we do have that extra feat that rogues get. Rogues get one more feat than most other characters, so we could use that feat to pick up something like tough and have plus two um, hit points per level, which is going to immediately mitigate the fact that we don't have a uh, cloak of protection or something like that. Another fantastic thing that we might want to, uh, if we can find find it somewhere, is a displacement cloak of displacement. Um, first attack against you uh, until you get hit by attack each round. Attacks against you have disadvantage. Really cool ability. Uh, other good choices, any type of um, vials, poisons, uh, a wand. If you can get like a wand of magic missiles, um, it is worth it. It's worth it if you have to spend a thousand gold on it. It is always worth it. It's such a powerful thing. You can use it. All characters can use one of magic missiles. Not even. It doesn't even require attunement, which is so, so good. Wand of magic detection is very good. So uh, immediate, like you have three times per day when you can just... If you're not sure about like this one door or this one trap or this one chest, you can just be like, I'm gonna use a uh, detect magic right now and just pull out the wand, tap the chest or tap the door or something and immediately know if it's magical. Really cool things that you can do with wands. Uh, wondrous items, let's take a look real quick. Remove common, lovely. Um, so brooch of shielding, bag of holdings, always good. Um, Broom of Flying significantly powerful. Cloak of Elven Kind is probably one of your good pickups, or the Boots of Elven Kind uh, to have advantage on stealth checks. Uh, that's going to help out massively. Hat of Disguise is incredibly powerful, and it's going to basically solve the fact that you don't have good charisma because you can just turn around a corner and then look like someone else. Solves so many problems. Um, while a regular rogue might want Gauntlets of Ogre Power, um, you probably don't until you're going to buff that strength to 20. You probably don't have these. If... Uh, when you do buff that strength to 20, though, I'd recommend selling these or trading these to one of your other party members. Um, Eyes of Minute Seeing or Eyes of the Eagle, fantastic things. Um, uh, goggles of Night, increase your dark vision by 60 feet. Gloves of Thievery, plus 5 to sleight of hand checks um, and dexterity checks made to pick locks. So that's going to solve the fact that we don't have dexterity. If we need to be a little bit more subtle than using a crowbar to pry something open. Um... And then we're getting into the rare items. We might be having one or two of these uh, by the time that we actually get to a certain point. Mantle spell resistance is probably one of the best rare items here. The advantage on saving throws against spells, which is massively powerful. Um, and then, uh, then we're getting into the very rare items. And I wouldn't even worry about trying to find something like these. Obviously, if you get a belt of any type of giant strength, it's worth whatever they're they're, they're charging for it. It's significantly powerful. And then you don't have to spend, uh, like if you can get it before level 10 when we're buffing that strength, amazing. Um, now, if I was a DM, I, I would never hand out one of these. These are uh, instantly game-breaking because they break the idea of bounded accuracy. Um, but there's really cool magic items in the game, and you're a rogue, so you can... Um, adequately plunder all of the fun magic items in the game as well. Cape, Cloak of the Mountebank, the once per day dimension doors, fantastic for the rogue. It's that nice get out of jail free card. Oops, I set off the alarm. Ring of Evasion is going to save those deck saves for you. When you do fail, you can still make sure you succeed. There's so many good options for you. Um, really, the best things that I can recommend is the Luck Stone and anything, any plus one enchantment on some of your hand axes or any other type of enchantment on your hand axes if you get a flame tongue or a frost brand or uh, any type of enchantment on them that gives a bonus to the damage roll like or an extra d4 damage or an extra d6 damage or something it is well worth it um honestly i think the plus one is better because you're going to be relying on sharpshooter to get that damage number up there so you want bonuses to hit not as much bonuses on damage we don't need the bonuses on damage as much because we have sharpshooter to make up for that so that's the build nice 30 minute video i hope you enjoy it uh take a look at playing through it in the next game i will link the mike Merle's tweet uh in the description down below so that way if you have a dm that's saying oh wait thrown no you can't use a sneak attack with a thrown ha uh, hand axe in melee no you can it it's on record as that you can it's still it's a thrown weapon meaning it is ranged and it is melee it's the same reason you can, you can sneak attack with a dagger or sneak attack i mean that is finesse also but um uh i hope that this has been a fun build for you it's a definitely different build i think this could be really cool as like a mountain man survivalist type of individual who happens to know his way around locks because he builds his own bear traps or something 
and it definitely gives a different feel to the rogue than this nimble, weak, um, like bodily weak, but nimble fingers and uh, soft of foot individual. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share my content to anyone you think might enjoy my channel. I hope to see you next time. And if you would like to support my channel, uh, I have set up a Patreon. The link is down in the description. Uh, anything you can uh, toss in the pot helps me continue to make this amazing content. So that way I can uh, devote a little bit more time to it. See you next time.